One of the surprises when I bought my Kindle was that it had a vocabulary builder. This is a feature or built-in app that few people talk about, but to me personally, this was one of the things that made the Kindle all that more valuable. It is a simple but powerful app, primarily because of the ease of its use, and also because the words always retain their link with the original context. In this video, I'm going to explain what it does and how it does it, and also why it's better than any other vocabulary builder app. And so if you're interested, keep watching. So when I bought my Kindle, I had no idea about this feature, simply because I had not heard anybody talk about it. And this is probably because very few people actually use it, as the Kindle is, after all, primarily a reading device. I discovered it while I was trying to find something else. I think the page numbers or percentage numbers have disappeared from my pages, and I was trying to get them back, and the settings for these are not very intuitively placed, so I had to move around the different menu points, and this is when I noticed the item Vocabulary Builder, and so I immediately tapped on it, and was taken to the list of words I had looked up before in the dictionary. Underneath there was the option Flashcards, and it allowed me to look at each word separately, and see the sentence where it was originally when I tapped on it and looked it up in the dictionary. So let's look at what we find here. The left top corner of the flashcard is bent back, indicating that I can click on it and see the definition of the word which is simply a short dictionary definition. But I would of course only want to do this when I truly cannot remember the meaning of the word. In the top right corner, there is the total number of words in my pack and the serial number of this word in the pack, which is useful for orientation, for seeing where I am at the moment, for tracking how many cards I have looked through. At the bottom of the card is the option to mark the word as mastered, so it would not come up again when practicing, but it would not disappear altogether either. In the top right corner of this interface, I can see the number of words I have mastered. So this, once again, helps me track my progress. And once I'm done with this flashcard, I can go on to the next one by clicking on one of the two arrows on the side. I like that the default side of the flashcards is the one in which the word appears in its original sentence. So I don't immediately look at the dictionary definitions which are devoid of context and typically do not tell me which definitions are more common than the others. Instead, I'm looking at the word in context. I'm looking at how it's used in a real sentence and what it means in the text where I saw and did not fully understand it. And I think this is one of the most useful features, namely that I can see the word in its original context, linked to the text I was reading. And because I have read the text, I would still recall, however vaguely, what it was all about. And perhaps I may even have some recollection of this particular sentence. By contrast, in dictionaries you find several different meanings, and you may find some sample sentences, and even if they are not artificial per se, they are out of context, taken from text I have not read, or I have not read recently, and the whole thing is a bit less concrete, a bit more abstract, which means that it's harder to memorize the words. Memory favors links and associations, and nothing beats a link to the place of original occurrence. I honestly believe that when learning vocabulary in any language, context is everything. And the closer I can remain to the original context, the better I will remember the words. So let's exit the flashcard here and go back to the original word list. The flashcard is for exercise, whereas this card is for reviewing the word and organizing your stack. And so appropriately, you can delete the word and its file altogether, or mark it as mastered. The delete part is useful for words you have clicked on by accident, and so you don't need them here. Like I have here the words years or teaching, because I have accidentally added them to the list, either by tapping in the wrong place when trying to look up an adjacent word, or perhaps when trying to highlight something. Since I don't need these words here, I can just quickly delete them, or mark them as mastered directly from here, without having to go back to the flashcard. Once you're done with the reviewing or exercises, you can just exit the whole vocabulary builder and return to the text that you're reading. And this is where the true magic of the Kindle vocabulary builder happens. Your stack of flashcards is built automatically as you look up words, so you don't even have to think about it. 
it collects the words for you in the background as you read and occasionally tap on words you don't understand and want to check their meaning. The ease of collecting difficult words in this manner cannot be overestimated because you don't actually have to do anything. The app literally stores away every single word you look up and adds it to the list. And this makes a major difference with other flashcard systems, whether it's Anki, Memrise or anything else. Another major advantage of the Kindle Vocabulary Builder is that it only collects the words that you actually need. Because you typically would not click on a word that you know, even if it's a difficult word. You would not be interested in confirming your knowledge of it by looking it up and then going, oh yep, yeah, that's what I thought. Instead, you only look up words you're unfamiliar with. And so your stack of flashcards only includes these words, minus the occasional mistakes, which you can simply delete. Whereas if you use, say, Memrise to improve your English vocabulary, you may choose a course like SAT Comprehensive, and you will see that there will always be quite a few words you already know. So typically, it would be a complete waste of time to keep exercising with these. It is also notoriously difficult to find a course or stack which is at the right level of difficulty for you. Because everybody's level of knowledge is different, and it's impossible to cater to everyone. But with the Kindle Vocabulary Builder, you don't have this problem. You build your own stack out of the words you need without the words you don't need. But all in all, the most important advantage of the Kindle Vocabulary Builder is the ease with which it collects the words. Doing this manually on the computer or with a pen and a paper notebook is unsustainable because of its tediousness. It is not difficult, but tedious enough for you to require some willpower to continue going with the project. With the Kindle Vocabulary Builder, this problem is solved altogether because you don't need to do anything. The program collects the words for you automatically. In the past, I have been trying to record unfamiliar words in the course of my reading, but it never became a habit because it takes a bit of mental energy to find a notebook and find a pen or open up a computer file and then look up the word on Google or in a dictionary. But with the Kindle, I have been able to collect thousands of words, and since then I think I've learned several hundred of them. And I attribute all this to the ease with which words are collected for me. And finally, I want to mention something that would make the Kindle Vocabulary Builder even better. And that is the ability to hear the pronunciation of words. Because right now, the pronunciation is indicated using the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is transparent enough, but still takes a little bit of effort to make sense of the pronunciation. But instead, if I was able to click on a word and hear it pronounced, that would make the app even more useful. Or better yet, give me the option to make this feature automatic, so when I open a flashcard, I can hear the word pronounced for me. But even the way it is right now, I think the Kindle Vocabulary Builder beats almost any other device or app. It is a shame it's not being pushed into the foreground more and promoted as one of the selling points of the Kindle. Okay, I would like to hear your experience with the Vocabulary Builder or why you have not been using it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.